So some of these are, are bigger numbers, all right? Um, you know, here's one that says 46 new or 59 new. And if I don't have time to click on those right now, I'm really only interested in this Fenton market search and I click on that and look at it. Um, tomorrow when I come in, this might say 48 or 49. And it'll just keep building what I haven't looked at yet until I have a chance to click in there and look at it. So that's the favorite searches. It'll walk you through that step by step either in the hot sheet handout or if you go to FAQs on marisnet.com, there's a little uh, handout just on favorite searches. All right? But I tell people that's where you want to save the 10 most important searches that you run every day. Might not be for clients, you have them set up for auto email, but it could be. Um, but that's a way that with one click, you can get an update on everything that you're interested all at once. All right? Everybody good with that? Okay, let's talk about CMAs, and then we'll talk about Realist, and then we'll do a Q&A and see what else we can cover. All right? Are you on information overload yet? Yeah. Close. Close. All right, so CMAs, if I go in to run a search, and I'm just gonna stick with residential detail for my example here. So I just went to my search tab, clicked on residential detail search, and if I just went solds, I'm gonna unmark active and mark solds. Solds by default go 365 days back, so it'll say 0-365. You could change that to 180 days back, if you want, I mean, you can just click in there and change those numbers. I've got a question. Yeah. What's the most you can go back? I, I, I've done 15,000. It says doesn't compute. Is there like just a max days back? Yeah, you can take this out and leave it blank, and then our MLS goes back to 98. Yeah. 1998. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Right. Take, take it out. All right. Yeah. 98. Or you could also click on the calendar to the right of the date field. And you could put in whatever date range you want. Show how you do that, because sure. I don't know how to do that. Okay, so let's say I just want to go from June 1st through today. Cool. I can just click on the first date, June 1st, and then today's date, and it automatically puts the dash in and puts the date range in for you. Cool. If you want to go back, you know, if I want to clear that, I want to go back to previous months, all right? I just use my little arrow here to go back by month, or the double arrows to go back by year. You just click the date that you want to start from, and then here's a little shortcut for that. If I'm going back further in time, and I want to go through today, but I don't want to click back through here, back to today's date, you could also just put a plus sign after that, Keith, and then it's going to go, oh, except that was operator error. Look away from the screen for a moment. <laughs> okay, so if I click on my calendar, and I go back to a previous date, and I highlight that, and then I can click in here at the end of that and put a plus sign, then that just means through today's date. So it's going back and you can leave that, you know, through date blank, so to say. You can okay. do that years too. Then. Absolutely. Very cool. All right, so you have several different ways to do that. It defaults to one year back, but you can change that by going days back, or you can click the calendar, put date <laughs> ranges in, or you know, you could even click in here and say, oh, I went from the first of the year, 01-01, 2012 plus, and that means from the first of the year plus forward through today. All right? So um, a question I have is, like, if I were to say, okay, in St. Charles County, how many active listings do we have? If I click active and then there's nothing in there, it'll say 2,500 plus matches. Right. We're and you just want the number? Yeah. You well, don't really need to see all the properties. No, I just okay. like 15,874. Okay, whatever. so let me just show you this real quick. Um, all I've marked is sold for the last year, and I have nothing else marked, so that means for the entire MLS. And uh, Keith was pointing out that here it says 20, it is Keith, right? Yeah. Okay. Nash. For a second I had a like. It's okay, Rachel. Maybe, yeah, tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. Um, so now if I click on this number here, it says 2,500 plus, but if I click that, it will actually give me oh, the number. Didn't know. So that. there's 23,602 mm -hmm. listings sold within the last year in our entire MLS. But it won't, it won't stay and hold that number? You can't, it's always gonna say 2,500. You have right, to if it's over 2,500, you have to click to see the actual count. All right. so, in Saint, so in St. Charles County, there's uh, 
2,693 listings, residential listings. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yes. Going the other way too. A lot of times I'll run a search and, and there's like 32 properties, uh -huh. and it comes up saying 25,000 or 2,500. Um, can I do the same thing there mm -hmm. to get a realistic number? Yeah, but I don't usually run into that problem, so I'm not sure why that would happen. Because earlier, I mean, normally as you put your criteria in, like if I switch this to 410 right now, you know, it changed to 464. And normally as you put your criteria in, price range. Um, 400 to 450. Now it knocks it down to 13. So I'm not sure why. Call tax support if it's not updating. Call and let them know that so we can look into why that's happening. All right. So let's get back to talking about our comp searches, running comps, doing CMAs. So here I just marked um, sold for the last year in area 410. I put a price range 400 to 450. I don't know how you normally put all your criteria in, but I'm just trying to get a quick. Uh, results so that I can show you the CMA. So I found 13 matches. I clicked your results. I carefully go through these, decide which are going to be my comps. And for today's example, I'm just going to say all 13, 13 of these are fabulous. I'm going to hit check all. Now, if I want a quick CMA, just down and dirty, I just want my one line, one page type CMA, I would just click two reports. All right? And you get your reports options. And you can scroll through those. You can use your control key on this page. So if you wanted to run a detail for each of these properties and the summary CMA and maybe a three up, whatever you want, you can just go through here. And I'm gonna choose the CMA one line. That's my quick summary report. Looks almost identical to the CMA we had in Rapatoni. And then maybe I do also want the three up comparison report at the same time. So now I just hit generate and that's gonna be my one line summary CMA and then my three up report which puts three comps at a time per page field by field comparison down the page. So that's how you do just a quick CMA is by just clicking to reports. <coughs> the only time we have to click on the CMA button is if we want to create a CMA package and I'll show you that in just a moment. But this would be my quick CMA, my one line and then the three up does three comps at a time field by field comparison down the page. You like that? Three uh, <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. I like it. All right. What? You know what it is. Uh, <laughs> okay. So you run your search, you select your comps on the left, and then you click report down at the bottom. Okay. Did you run your search? Uh, Then after you do reports, do you know, what do you go? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And then you select them and then report. Oh, CMA one-line portrait. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then again, if you want to select multiples, you can use your control key. I like it. All right. So the other option that you have is to click on CMA, and that'll be a CMA package with cover page, cover letter, all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to walk through this step by step by step. It's in the help section. I think there's a video on it you can watch. But I'll just point out a couple of things um, that are important when you're doing it. So if I click to CMA, it's going to have the different steps across the top of the page. And it does have you either select a contact name or create a new contact. All right. Yeah, George Clooney, Jennifer Aniston. Not returning my calls these days, but. Um, so that's step one. And as we go through, you'll notice this will auto save as we're going through it. And then it'll be saved under my matrix to your CMAs there. You can get back to it at any time. Um, it is a dynamic CMA, so if I create it today and then next week I go into it, if there's been a price change or status change or anything like that has happened, that'll all be updated and reflected in the CMA. Um, step two is pages, and this is the one that I want to point out some things about it because it's confusing to people. Um, you can see I have some selected pages over here on the right, and as you set this up, again, this might be something that you just have to do once, and then you can hit set as default, and then just like I have, every time you come in, your pages that you've selected will already be there. But when you first come in, it's a little bit confusing to people because all you see on the left-hand side are these 
four categories. Yes. Cover, subject and adjustment, comps, and then static pages. If you click on the plus sign to the left of each of those categories, that'll pull down all of the pages that you can choose from for each of those categories. And then if you want a particular page, you know, then you just click it and it adds it to your CMA. And then once you have the pages set up that you like, you hit set as default. All right? If you were to click inadvertently or, or on purpose on one of these, these category headings, it would add all the pages from that category to your CMA. And if you didn't want that, you could just highlight them over here and click the little X to take them back off. All right? So there's the cover sheet, either with your agent photo or without your agent photo. Your subject and adjustments, obviously you wouldn't need a price adjustments page if you're not doing any adjustments to your CMA. Um, the comp pages, those are, again, you might want to run something that has all of them and then you can decide which format you like best. And then the static pages are things like uh, what is a CMA, market mm -hmm. analysis explanation, imports of pricing, activity versus timing, all those little kind of add-on pages. You guys might have Keller William pages already that you use for that, but if you don't, they have some in here. And then the rest of it, I'm not, like I said, going to walk through it all right now, but you can add your subject property. I do have a question though. Yeah. On selected pages, I'm like clicking on the selected pages and they're disappearing. Is that how you get rid of them? Like on, just double, just click on something. So you just disappear. Oh yeah, you can double click to get rid of it too. Okay, is that how, you're yeah. just getting rid of it by clicking yeah. on it? Yeah. Or you yeah. can click this little X to get rid of it also. But. Okay. All right. All right, you can add a subject property, you can choose to set up your cover sheet, um, then it'll show you the actual comps. So if I'm running this again next week and I wanted to delete any of these comps or add additional comps, I can do that. The adjustments, like I said, if you're gonna do adjustments, I don't know that many people do, you can do that. But here's my selected comps page. I could at some point later remove any of these. I could go out and search for additional comps or add comps from the cart. So if I had run a search and I want to throw them in here, I can add them to a cart and then pull them in. The adjustments page. Again, I don't know if you ever do adjustments, but if you did, there's certain fields um, that you have the ability to do adjustments for. Oh, I didn't put a subject property in. But the nice thing is, is that if I said um, that I was gonna do an adjustment for bedrooms, I put the, I decide the value of the bedroom, I put it in, and then the system will automatically add or subtract it based on your subject property. Right. And then the pricing page really doesn't do a whole lot, it'll just give you a little summary, you know, high, low, median, average, and it'll give you a place where you can type in suggested pricing information for your customer or client. And that's it, then you finish and you can email or print that CMA. But otherwise, it's been saving it automatically. Bless you. It's been saving it automatically for me and I can get to that by going to My Matrix and CMA at any time. All right, so just a quick review how we got there. We ran a search for our comps, although I'm just gonna use my recent searches drop down to get back to that. Hopefully everybody knows about your recent searches drop down. Yep. Up at the top, right? This keeps track of up to the last 50 searches that you've ran for the past however many days, and you can get back to things quickly there. But here's my 13 comps. It even remembers to check them all for me when I go back. And from there, I just hit CMA to do the CMA package. For just the quick print, gotta go, I need a quick CMA that you just go to reports for. All right, the only time you need to click CMA is if you wanna build that whole CMA package. Everybody good with that? All right, so let me go back. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I'll just, from this page here, I'll, I'll start demoing some things about Realist, but did you have a question? Well, just on the avail, how do you update your cover sheet with your photo, and can you modify yeah. these things? Yep, you do that once right there, and then there is a set default for your cover sheet as well, down at the lower right. Yeah. So once you set that up once, you can just hit set default and then every time it'll... How do you set it up? You, you just fill out that information. If your photo is not already there, you can upload your agent photo. I don't see the thing. I just see to move it to selected pages. Hold on, let me go. 
Oh, click on where it says at the blue menu bar across the top. Hit yeah. cover, uh, the blue steps for the CMA. After pages, it should say subject, and then it should say cover page. Uh, we'll talk about it later, I guess. It's right here. How do I, like... Cover. Cover. Yep. Cool. Okay, done. Oh, done. <laughs> Thank you. You're Perfect. welcome. All right, so let's... Yeah, yes. Oh, that, like the full CMA, CMA thing, like if you just click save as, can you save it on a memory stick or something like that to take with you somewhere? Or? Oh, the CMA? Yeah. It'll be automatically saved for you through my oh, matrix. Okay. You can go to CMAs. Um, it does open in a PDF format, so at that point you could save it okay. as whatever you want. Yeah, but it'll always be saved here under My Matrix CMAs. Okay. Bless you, is that a sneeze over here? Not this yet. Um, and then if you go to pull up the CMA, you can print it, email it, etc. Um, but if you go into view it, then that'll just be a PDF format. Okay. So at that point, yes, you can save it to whatever you want. <coughs> Hmm. And I shouldn't have clicked on that because they're, they usually take a minute to load, cause especially if it's a lot of pages. So I'm going to close out of that. Okay, I'm going to go back just for time's sake, I'm going to go back to those same 13 properties. But again, anytime you run a search for properties and we're looking at our results page, whether it's a hot sheet, a client search, a CMA search, We're having entirely too much fun back there. <laughs> which one is that? Yeah, which one is that, that format? This is the summary format, and most agents do prefer this one because it has the listing office and listing agent as part of the. Oh no, this is not a report, it's a display. So on your results page up at the top right, it'll say display, and you can choose. And that's also something that you can set as a default. On, from the search screen so that every time you run a search it would load. All right? So <clears throat> this happens to be the summary format, but no matter which format you're looking at, if it's single line, they'd be over on the far right-hand side of the page. Otherwise, on all the other formats, they're usu usually either just below or just above the picture. And that all these little icons include the, the globe for your map, um, your Polaroid for your polar or for your pictures. Alarm clock is history, and then for most properties, you're going to have these three little black buttons. So we're going to start our discussion about the realist tools that you have available here. All right, and then I'll also go in and show you how you can run things through realist as well. Just even if it's never been used <coughs> in MLS, we can go to realist and pull it up. But when we're in MLS and we want to get information, the first little button that says TX, that's just going to open up a quick print tax report, realist tax report. And up at the top it'll say print, and it has owner information, location, school district, etc. Tax information, I noticed that St. Charles now has the 2011 taxes in realist. Um, people always ask about that, and we get that information when the county releases it. <coughs> Most counties don't release the tax year information until mid-year. So like, we won't get 2011 until about this time of the year in 2012. We won't get 2012 until summer of 2013. And people always say, well, they have it on their website. Well, I know they do, but they don't want to give it to anybody else um, right away. So whenever they release it, we get it on here. Then we have characteristics of the property. <coughs> and I want to point out here that if something in the tax information differs from what somebody put in the MLS information, it's going to notify us of that. So here you can see that a couple of these fields, um, you know, tax has here billed it to, as 2004, but somebody listed it in MLS as 2005. All right? It's just giving you a heads up that, hey, something is different about how it's in the tax versus MLS. Yeah, a lot of times that'll be different too. And then we have things like estimated value, listing information, market and sales history, and mortgage history if available. So that's just the quick print report. And I got to that just when you're in MLS, you click on the little TX button. Now when you're looking at that report, there's also a button up here that says launch realist. 
So if I want more information about this property, all the juicy stuff, I can click Launch Realist and it's gonna give me everything else that's available, all right? The and stuff. the juicy stuff. <laughs> and from here, we're gonna get several tabs across the top. The first one, it's just gonna open to into property detail. And that's really gonna be pretty much what we just saw in that printable report. But there's a few extra things at the bottom. Like it'll have um, a parcel outline with dimensions of the property. So we can see here, mostly the same information until we get down at the bottom, there might be a few extra things like the parcel dimensions, which that one, um, that's actually the building dimensions there, and then the thumbtack map of the property. There is a comparables button for each property. If we hit to that, this is another way you could be running a CMA. And what's cool is that now that MLS data and tax data are fully integrated, it'll pull MLS comps and tax comp. So it'll have everything that was listed in MLS, plus if there's some properties that weren't, it'll put all those together in a CMA for you. Now when you go into Realist, there is a preferences button up at the top where you can set up a lot of these things, you know, preferences for how you want your comps chosen. Oh, I need to modify my preferences, something was. So can you go back? Is there a field on there for like, um, searching back from time to okay, right there? Yep. Wow. Yeah, you can go up to 12 months back or put a specific date date range in. And then once you have that set up. Going slow here. Yeah. Well, and I think is that new construction? I don't know. Maybe there's not much to pull from it. All right. So now it found some comps for me. Again, you can modify your preferences and then I can hit generate comp report. It's going to do a nice little report similar to what I was doing earlier through the reports. It's going to do a summary and then kind of a three up comparison of each property. All right. With the subject in the first column and then three comps at a time beside it. Yes. Is it going to pull like just ranches or will it just No. When you go into your preferences, you can set that. You can set style. Um, you know, it'll say some things are the same as the subject, like the land use here. So if it's a single family, it only pulls single families, etc. But you could choose style if you wanted the style to be the same as the subject. You can do that here as well too. All right. You're welcome. So that's the comps. Market trends. This is going to do a little bit of trending. It's just really based at the county level and zip code level. It's going to give us some um, graphs and charts that show some things like sales information, median price, median home values, median list price, median sale price, sales activity. All right. So again, some people like to throw that into their presentations. That's up to you. There's a neighbors tab. I'm not going to click on that. That literally all it does is give you a list of the 30 closest neighbors. All right, and when we switched to the new realist and I said, well, what do people use that for? They said in some markets, people use it as part of like their buyer's information, you know, or if somebody's gonna put an offer in on a property, here's your 30 na closest neighbors. I don't know that many people do that, but if you wanted to be a nosy neighbor before you even move in, there you go. Um, <laughs> and then we have the neighborhood profile. Now this neighborhood profile, if I switch back to matrix for just a second, this series of black buttons that you get that are shortcuts to realist information, one of them is a little button with an N on it, and that's for neighborhood uh, report information. So this neighborhood profile is gonna give you census type information. It's literally just based on the census tract that that property is in. So it's gonna give us population by age, general household information, number of households, estimated growth, all that good stuff. Um, Female versus male, all right? If you got a single client, there you go. Um, <laughs> median home values, renters versus owners, mortgage payments, rent payments, all that kind of stuff. Household income, education, private school versus public school. Did, that was what you mentioned earlier too, right? Well, um, yeah. That also and then you can get point. local businesses. Now you can modify preferences here and um, can include businesses and things like that. You could include schools within a, a radius. So this is only showing 
distance from the subject one mile, if I upped that to 10, it'll go through and it'll show all the schools within a 10 mile radius. Again, it has nothing to do with which school this property actually attends, you know, how that goes. Um, Holy disclaimer. Huh? Holy disclaimer. Right, okay. Right, right. But I'll just show you this real quick because it is kind of cool, especially if you have an out of area buyer. On this report in the school section, see how it lists the school and it has links directly to the school dis that school's website? It does have some school ratings, like the grade school ratings or community ratings. And then below here, just like Jeff said, are little disclaimers. There's a lot of schools within 10 miles. I think I should have only said like five. But it does all the schools and then do, 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 somewhere when we get through all those. My goodness. It does give a little blurb then at the bottom about where those grade school ratings come from and where the community ratings come from. But the nice thing, like I said, is it would have, like, here's DeSmet. I can click on that link and it takes me to DeSmet's website. So if you have somebody that's an out of area buyer, that's a nice little report to send to them for them to be able to click in and look at all the different schools from one place. All right. How do they click that? Um, you would send that to them. Any of these things that I'm showing you, you always get a print or email. Obviously, you'd have to email it. can't print it and let, let them click on it. Um, but you could email it to them, and then they'd be able to click in there. All right? So that's all just through the neighborhood profile. Again, when you're in Matrix, you click this little N button, and that's a shortcut right to the neighborhood profile. All right. So... Last thing, there's not many building sketches loaded in there, so I'm gonna skip that. As we get them, if, if we can get them from the county, we'll have those available too. But let's see, I don't know for St. Charles County. Yeah, we don't have that. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is the, um, the mapping feature. And in Matrix, you have a shortcut to the mapping by clicking on the little M button for a property. Mm -hmm. But if you click even to just the general information about a property, up at the top right, you can hit close report right here. So where you have all your juicy <coughs> details about the property, you hit close report and that's gonna take you into the parcel mapping. So it's gonna give me a map of the property, parcel map of the property. <coughs> and now what I'm gonna show you is using all these little tools over here on the right hand side of the page, the different things you can do, all right? Now yours may be by default in what's called the split view, which puts a parcel map at the top and a, some uh, grid at the bottom. So you can always change your view to the full map view if you're doing some of these parcel mapping features and want a bigger map. All right. So we're probably gonna go about 15 more minutes and I'm gonna wrap up. I know you guys probably have lots of other things to do today, although hopefully not outside. Um, but I wanna start with the drawing tool up at the top. And I just want to point out that when you come into Realist on the left, there's two search tabs. So if it defaults to the quick search, your drawing tool up here at the top right is grayed out. And it'll tell you if you put your cursor there, drawing tools are only enabled in my search. So that's just a little heads up that if your drawing tool is grayed out, you just switch to my search over here, and then it's going to be activated or highlighted, and you can use it. Now let's say that I just listed or just sold this property, and I wanted to do a mailing to people in the surrounding area. I can choose to use my drawing tool to draw a radius on this map and it tells me to begin, click the mouse, and then to end, click it again. So if this was a just listener just sold, I come in on this map and click on the gray part of the map to start my circle. Now I feel like, <coughs> sorry, not gonna sneeze. Um, and then I just start dragging it out and I can left click when I'm done and I'm purposely not drawing a very big circle in here, okay? But I have this circle.